Well, it's all a part of the process. He's in Bush Grand National Championship form, and obviously, he likes it. Well, one week ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got beat, probably by himself. Like the call or not, he did receive the black flag for running into the rear of Joe Bessie. A one-lap penalty on pit road that clearly cost him his shot at the win. I know that's old history now, but we can dredge it up. We got some time. First of all, what did you learn from that evening? Well, I said, uh, you know, I really, uh, I was so angry and so mad uh, about the situation. I really didn't take in too much uh, or really learn a whole lot from it. But it, it's, uh, it's a position I've been in before at, uh, at Myrtle Beach racing late models. And it's just, you go on the next week like, or not, like nothing happened and try to keep on racing and work toward the points championship. And you still hold the points lead. You come to this track. You'd never seen it before, but you did test here. Yeah, we did. We tested here, but with another race car. So what we learned there is limited ourselves with enough with another car here for the race. So it's hard to tell what uh, you know what is going to unfold in this race for us. This car was good in practice, but everyone here basically qualified on their race setup. You taped yours up, got a little loose. Yeah, we did. We also had a little more air pressure than we would have liked to have had. Uh, something we tried at South Boston that worked. It just didn't work here. So. Those are the type of things you're going to run into, but we got to stay conservative now that we got the points lead, but we're here to race to win. We ain't racing for points. And you know tonight people will be watching as you try and get to the front. Yeah, it's rare, rare that we start this far back, so it's going it's to be pretty exciting. Well, among the people that will be watching will be his dad, who earlier today on ESPN said he hopes this kid keeps his head screwed on. I'm sure he will. He's hoping it can be an Earnhardt sweep in Indy this weekend, beginning tonight with Dale Jr. The number on the door is 74. And his place in the race is usually up front. But early in 1998, the two-time NASCAR Bush Grand National Champion had his racing world literally turned upside down. Just finishing races had become a challenge. On the flip side of summer, the season's second half has been much more to LaJoy's liking. A dominant win at Myrtle Beach was backed up last week with a runner-up at South Boston. Now fourth in the points, Randy returns to IRP, poised for an unprecedented third consecutive victory. And the champion's smile has returned. It's been a busy day for Randy LaJoy. He's been uh, here qualifying on the outside of row number one and then went over to IMS where he finished fourth in the IROC race. Are you tired of all this yet? Not at all. Uh, by the end of this 200 lap program race, I'm going to be tired. and. Uh, as long as I'm in Victor Lane drinking some Gatorade and some Kool-Aid, I think I'll be all set. Let's talk a little bit about the guy you're going to be starting next to. He was about a tenth of a second quicker than you. It's an old friend, a good buddy, and, and certainly no one you've ever had any contact with, Buckshot Jones. Hey, that's why they have two lanes on racetrack. One for him and one for me. <laughs> uh, you know, first lap would be nice to lead, but we want to win this race and, uh, for Phoenix, Chevrolet, Monte Carlo. So uh, the 200 lap is more important than the first one second half now ever since this second half started you guys have really been getting in the groove and the confidence level has returned hasn't it it's good to run good and uh, we've run well uh, started you know on a short track program this race team is, has done well so uh, I think this is our last short track for a while so uh, we really need to just uh, win us a race uh, teammate won one last week I need to win one this week all right, let's move over and catch up with Buckshot Jones. He's going to start the double O right over this way. And Buckshot, uh, in fact, he's on the cell phone right now. And Buckshot, we were talking to your uh, good buddy and cohort and getting his uh, side on this, uh, the fact that you two have had a, a, a few contratemps, a little tete-a-tete -tete here and there. What's, uh, what's it going to be like tonight in turn one? I don't know. Uh, you know, me and Randy have had our problems in the past, but uh, we race each other at Milwaukee. We race each other hard. Uh, probably harder than we probably race other people, but, you know, we race each other clean. What happened in the past is pretty much there. Uh, I don't harp on what happened in the past, but I think me and Randy, you know, if I think he's going to be someone to contend with, I think we are. There's going to be some more people, so I think it's going to be a really exciting race, not just for us, but for the fans and the people watching it at home. Hey, now you qualified for the Brickyard 400, your first tomorrow. Are you going to be able to focus enough tonight, not think about that at all tomorrow while you're out there? Yeah, you know, this Bayer Aquaselser Pontiac, you know, we got the test up here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the car ran great, and, you know, we didn't get to bring the same car back. Uh, this is a different car, but, 
you know, we had to change a couple things, but the guys got the car good. It's good and quick. Uh, just got things gonna be a little bit different for everybody right now because we got to practice in the heat of the day, and uh, now it's gonna be a lot cooler. So uh, it's gonna be kind of even for everybody. Well, he was a full tenth of a second quicker than Randy LaJoy and at over 111 miles per hour. welcomes you to Indianapolis Raceway Park, the site of tonight's NASCAR Bush Grand National Kroger 200. The cars are lined along the front straightaway, and tonight, 200 laps around this tight, repaved, redesigned half-mile facility, and it is a track with a reputation for a lot of great racing and a lot of excitement. Jerry Punch and Chad Little will be joining you up in the booth tonight, along with Marty Reed. I'm Bill Weber down on Pit Road, and there are several stories we'll be able to follow tonight. First of all, some stories that we have to address from last week. We've already heard from Dale Earnhardt Jr., who received the penalty for running into Joe Bessie at South Boston. But, Joe, you were on the other end of that, on the tail end of the lead lap, your version of what happened last week at South Boston. Yeah, it was just good, hard racing, uh, just doing my best, doing actually doing a good job of, uh, of holding him off and, and staying on the lead lap. And Dale just, I think he was taking heat from, from uh, Fedor in traffic and just, he said it, I mean, he just got impatient and just, uh, I mean, just lifted me up out of the groove and into the fence. I just really, really uh, happy with NASCAR just having the guts to, to uh, pull the plug on his win. Uh, not that I didn't want him to win, I just, I mean, I, I was out of it for the night, and, uh, and I, I just, it saved me from being in a situation I didn't want to be in, and uh, just a uh, little disappointed with the way that the network that was covering the race handled it. Uh, we were not down a lead, uh, we were not down a lap, we were trying to stay on the lead lap, and uh, had done it. I mean, I had run in front of him for 10 or 15 laps, and then was really keeping the space between us, and uh, we are just, it was just good hard racing, and I was, kind of played out to be the to, like I was in Dale's way and uh, but uh, that's all behind us uh, starting behind me again tonight uh, <laughs> we start 15th he starts 16th but uh, there's no problem there it's just good hard racing last week and uh, we're out here and uh, do it again tonight. Well, obviously, both drivers say they have put it behind them. This has been a big week for Power Team, though, and A.J. Foyt and company. They got the win at Charlotte with Kenny Breck in the IRL race last Saturday. You expect to see A.J. here tonight, and you'd like to put forth another great performance. Yeah, so proud of those guys that we sat in the parking lot at South Boston last uh, Saturday night in the motorhome and watched the whole race and just really happy for Kenny and A.J. and that whole Power Team team. And, for us to win a, a bush race for him last year, and now AJ winning an IRL race for him, uh, they're just really making a statement in this uh, sport with sponsoring both teams on, on each side of the fence, and it just it's been great for him, and it's been great for everybody involved. Good luck tonight. Thank you. That's Joe Bessie. He starts in the middle of the pack, but one guy who had a great qualifying run that starts near the front is Elliot Sadler, and he's with Marty Reed. Uh, that's right. I'm standing with Elias Sadler. He has a little record that he can set tonight, but before we uh, talk about that, we should point out reason why we aren't with the helmets on and going <laughs> racing. We had a support race the, just a few hours ago, and one of the cars got upside down, cracked a hole in one of the walls on the front straightaway. Crews are working on it. We're hoping to be going here in any moment. But this record, I want to talk about this because you could set a record for being the youngest and quickest to a million dollars in career earnings in Bush. And you didn't even know it till I talked to you. I didn't know it at all. Uh, I just, just want to race. You know, you know, it's, it's great to get paid and NASCAR puts out and all the sponsors put out great purses for our guys to, to race with. And uh, really didn't know anything about it, but uh, seems like a pretty great achievement to only be 23 years old and uh, be pretty uh, successful so far. So it's, it's a pretty good deal. A little extra incentive tonight. So hopefully we get in the top three and uh, hopefully make that dream come true. Top three does it in 66 races at age 23. You know the guy who your records are going to beat? Chad Little is what they said, and uh, Chad Little, he's won a lot of bush races and he's going to Winston Cup and done very well, so uh, hopefully I can follow in his footsteps a little bit and uh, hopefully be able to do the same thing. Yeah, and Chad Little is going to be in the booth with us tonight, so we'll give him a chance to see if he's going to uh, sort of 
beat on you a little bit because he doesn't want that record broken, I'm sure. Chad did it four years older, 27, and it took like 89 races. So you've got some pads, even if you don't do it tonight, but I have a feeling that uh, you're going to be moving towards the front. Stay with us. We've got a lot more coming from Indianapolis Raceway Park, the Kroger 200 Bush Grand National Race. ESPN coverage of the NASCAR Bush Grand National Series Kroger 200 is being brought to you by ESPN Video. Get your officially licensed NASCAR videos from ESPN Video. By Suzuki, makers of fine motorcycles and ATVs. And by Texaco, a world of energy. Well, hello everyone, I'm Jerry Punch along with Chad Little, former Bush Series driver, now Winston Cup regular in the John Deere Ford Taurus. We are glad to have you with us here at a sold-out Indianapolis Raceway Park. You know, Chad, last Saturday night, the Bush Series sort of went back to its roots. Good old short track Saturday night racing. See, hot temperatures, hot action, and hot tempers. And we've already talked to Dale Earnhardt, little E, about the fact that he waited as long as he could and then finally couldn't wait any longer and ended up getting penalized, but he took it like a man. He did, and do you really think uh, after they were talking to Joe Bessie there that J Joe said everything he was really thinking? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, now that was the first incident, but in the middle of the race, the tempers did boil over a little bit at South Boston, Virginia last week. Take a look here. The Lance Chevrolet for Jeff Purvis obviously had gotten a tap. He's in the wall. Now that's where it all starts. Now take a look. Moments later on pit road. Here comes Purvis. He taps the back of Mark Green's car. And now suddenly, the Jerry Springer show is going to break out. What a melee. Yeah, now what we didn't get to see is the 37 car and the four got into it on the racetrack for several laps. Jeff Purvis was obviously very upset. He comes in here, they start throwing fists, fighting, getting on top of each other. It was, it was crazy in there. I tell you what, NASCAR levied some stiff fines as a result of this. We don't need this for our sport. Someone's going to get hurt. And I think drivers and crew members will think twice before this happens again. I think this must have affected Purvis's vision. He goes after a guy that's about double his size. Come on, Jeff, cool down a little bit. Well, the upshot of all this was that Purvis was suspended for four weeks and fined $5,000. He appealed that fine, and yesterday we were told that uh, they had upheld the four-week suspension and doubled the fine to 10000 So if I'm Jeff Purvis, I don't appeal it anymore. That's going to get a little costly. Think about the four-week suspension, though. That's four weeks that he can't race, no points, zero points. It's like he's not even there. So, I mean, that's, just, that's worse than any monetary fine. And ordinarily, I've known Jeff Purvis a long time. He is not a hothead. I mean, he's more, normally pretty laid back and pretty relaxed and stuff. For him to lose his temper, obviously, was a lot more involved than what we saw in that video a moment ago. But, of course, NASCAR made a solid statement with the money and the suspension, and that will certainly get a lot of drivers' attention. Okay, let's check back into pits once again. Well, as we continue to wait for some repairs being made to the front stretch wall, looks like we should have the green flag just a few minutes from now. That would be at 8 o'clock uh, Indianapolis time, 9 o'clock Eastern time. And let's walk in here. And by gosh, here's Todd Bodine, the driver of the Slim Jim Chevy. And what an impressive qualifying run you start. 18th. 18th. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a big number in this town, you know, now, because they signed that quarterback to that big lucrative contract, and his number is 18. Well... I don't think it's going to work for me, or if, <laughs> if it would have, I would have won that Powerball. <laughs> but, uh, no, we, we were seventh fastest in practice. We had a really good car and uh, just got loose qualifying. Uh, a lot of these guys I talked to said they just really got loose. I think the track loosened up or those little cars put some different rubber down or something. But uh, just got loose, but the Slim Jim Chevrolet ran good in practice, and uh, hopefully it'll run good in the race. Uh, I've, I've always enjoyed this racetrack. And, uh, to come back here with a good team and a good car, I'm looking forward to it. But it's a little different. New surface, a little different racetrack. Can you get to the front from 18th time? It's going to be tough. Uh, after watching that truck race the other night, there wasn't a whole lot of passing. Uh, there wasn't an outside groove or an inside groove. You had to run the middle, and uh, it was tough for them to pass. Uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we can get the rubber they put down. We're breaking the track in. Maybe some rubber we can get down. Maybe we can get a second groove in and get some passing done, but... Uh, I tell you, I think pit strategy is going to have a lot to do with who wins this race. Okay, we'll be watching. Have a good one. Thank you. That's Todd Bodine. He will start 18th. Closer to the front of the grid, here's Marty. Yes, up at the seventh starting spot will be Ken Schrader's uh, number one driver in the truck series. Also tonight, in the Oakwood home Chevy, uh, Mike Wallace. And last time we saw you last night was another one of those misfortunes. You had bad luck. You were running good in the truck race. You get a reprieve chance tonight. Well, I left home thinking I was going to win three out of three races this weekend. Last night, tonight, and in Loudoun on uh, Sunday. But uh, unfortunately, a pure later, pure one truck was running great last night. We had a little failure on the front of the motor in there. And 
tightens some belts. And but we're here tonight in Andy Petrie's uh, car, the Oakwood Homes car. That Kenny Schrader's going to drive the rest of the year and uh, qualified at seventh. Look like we can win a race here tonight. Last time you won a Bush race was here, August. I think what 95. 94. 94. Oh, well, well, well. We'll take 95. We'll take 90, 98, too, now. So, uh, no, there's a huge crowd here. I mean, it's a wonderful night. A lot of atmosphere. A little delayed because of the wall problem there from a previous race. But we're looking forward to a great race. I feel real confident in this whole Andy Petrie team. We can take this thing home to win. Go to Loudon tonight after the race and win the truck race on Sunday with my guys up there. Uh, but that's on another network. We can't talk about that anymore. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Remember, you're a play-by-play -play guy now after uh, the Winds of West uh, race. You're yeah, both a big TV guy. <laughs> Been making all the big bucks now, right? <laughs> Starting seventh tonight, guys. Mike Wallace. All right. There's the wall Mike is talking about now. Baby Grand Race about 45 minutes to an hour ago. Just had just gotten started when suddenly everything broke loose. We had two cars upside down, one on its roof, one on its side. One tumbled over and burst into flames. The driver out okay because the safety crews were there. But unfortunately, a chunk of that wall was taken out by about seven or eight cars coming up against that wall and bouncing off. So uh, that's why we had the delay. That's why you're looking at Chad Little and myself talking to you about what's going to happen here tonight and what's going to happen tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, the fifth annual Brickyard 500, our live flag-to-flag -flag coverage coming your way at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ABC Sports. There's a look at uh, Jeff Gordon, the young man from... Indiana from Pittsburgh, Indiana, who won the inaugural Brickyard 400. And, of course, the current Winston Cup point leader. He will start third tomorrow, exactly the same spot he started back in 1994. Now my co-host tonight here, Chad Little, will also be in that event tomorrow. And, Chad, you start back in 35th position. And you're saying, well, I didn't have a good qualifying spot, but a lot of guys went home. Jerry, you told me you weren't going to bring that up. Well, uh, you're, but you're in the field, though. That's what counts. A lot of guys would love to have your spot. I saw a lot of long faces headed back to garage after second round qualifying. Very competitive field, like always. And, uh, you know, if you can't qualify in the pool, you want to be in the top 25. We missed that by a couple tenths. We had a great practice and happy hour. That's what's important. So we feel we have a good car for the race. And, you know, it's my second Brickyard race, and what's important is we're there, and uh, we're going to get a good showing for John Deere uh, come tomorrow. Indeed, and I watched you in happy hour today. You guys ran better and better and better in happy hour. Jeff Hammond getting the car dialed in there for you a little bit. A a lot of guys starting toward the back said they're going to be able to make their move early. We saw Jeff Burton getting stronger. Earnhardt's back there in 28th spot, so maybe you can hook on and you guys can all sort of sail toward the front. I'm starting right next to Jeff Burton. In fact, uh, he's one position in front of me. That'll give me a chance to follow him because I guarantee his car is going to be strong. All right, take a look at some of the fans here. Some of the Hoosier hysteria. You have to look awfully hard to find any better race fans than they have right here in Indiana. Here's a starting grid for tomorrow's Brickyard 400. Ernie Irvin for the second consecutive year on the pole, but this year in a Pontiac. Look at that speed, 179.394 miles per hour. And there's the 1996 winner right beside him, Dale Jarrett. Ernie Irvin went out first, too, and he set the blistering pace for the whole field. It was surprising, and I think everyone looked at that and said, this track's going to be fast, but nobody could come close. There's our tonight's pole sitter, Buckshot Jones, making his second Winston Cup start of the year back in 15th spot. Wally Dolan back back there, Kenny Wallace. And there's a look at Michael Walter back in. There's Dale Earnhardt in 28th spot. They were about 17th, 18th quickest car in practice today. Thought that his car would handle awfully well early tomorrow, and he'd be able to make it to the front early on. And there is Chad Little starting back in 35th. Jeff Burton in 34th. You guys running awfully well in happy hour, and I think uh, we might see those cars make a move early on. Morgan Shepard, boy, they rolled the dice today, not going out to qualify. And hang on, hung on to the 36th starting spot. And, of course, Darrell Waltrip starting 43rd in that past Champions Provisional, first time back in the car. The Tabasco Chevrolet and the guys that did not qualify. What a tough day for Derek Cope. He tried so very, very hard. The car off the concrete up in turns three and four. Hutz Strickland, Robbie Gordon, McDonald, Loy Allen Jr., Danny Pardis, Gary Bradbury, and Lance Hooper. Those are the cars that didn't qualify. 43 will start tomorrow. We got 39 starting tonight for 200 laps of Kroger Bush Series action from Indianapolis Raceway Park. Right back. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, great crowd on hand for the 17th running of the NASCAR Kroger 200 here in Claremont, Indiana. Fans are waiting, we are being told, will be getting underway very, very shortly. They have told the drivers to buckle up and set you up, get ready for NASCAR racing action. Well, let's go down back to the grid and visit with the 1994 Series champion who starts sixth tonight. Here's David Green. Yes, we're down here with David, and you're right. They are strapping in, and you consider this your home track. Last time you ran here, you ran third in the BGN Series. 
Well, it is, Marty. It's uh, fairly close to Winsboro, right across the river down there. But uh, had some good success here at IRP, but still the same old IRP. We got some new pavements and good grip right here, and uh, hopefully a Stanley Pontiac uh, work itself to the front do that throughout this whole race. You have five top five finishes in a row since coming on board with this team. That's got to make everybody feel a lot, lot better. Well, it does, and thanks to a great crew and, and a uh, good bunch of equipment here, and uh, but also it makes me feel pretty good. I, I've had a, a wonderful time here, and we're knocking on the door for Victory Lane, and that's our, our main goal right now, but um, everything's went good. Great pit stops, great crew, great equipment, and um, the communication's pretty good so far. I finally have learned one thing that you can't do. You can't do two things at the same time. You can't talk to me and strap in, can you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I take great pride in strapping in, and I enjoy talking to ESPN, and thanks for all the viewers for tuning in. It's going to be a great race tonight. Let's go down to Bill Weber with Mike McLaughlin and see if he's already strapped in. He's working on it. Right now you're looking at the Gould's Pump Chevrolet. Well, at least most of it is. Actually, the back bumper of this car is the Fina Chevrolet because they had to go over and borrow one from Randy LaJoy and company, because Mike McLaughlin made his qualifying lap spectacular here. And what'd you do, back it into the wall or something? Yeah, a little bit of driver error, but... Uh, <laughs> what'd he do wrong? Uh, I think he just drove in too far. I'm not sure, but uh, it didn't stick too good. We were able to keep it out of the fence uh, without too much major damage. Got a great bunch of guys. Put a new back end on it, we're 100%. These short track races have really jumbled up the points the last couple of weeks. This might be your week to pick up some more. You never know. You know, I, I feel confident in, in what we've got, and uh, you just have to play it out and see what happens. Hopefully, Gould Pump Chevrolet will be up front towards the end of the day. Good luck, Mike. That's Mike McLaughlin. He's ready to roll, and most of the drivers are in their cars and buckling their belts and getting ready to go, Jerry and Chad. All right, twilight here in Claremont, Indiana, at Indianapolis Raceway Park as we get set for the NASCAR Kroger 200 NASCAR Bush Series event. What a great crowd on hand, and they're going to see an exciting race. Back in a moment. We welcome you back to Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana, where momentarily we'll be rolling the cars off pit road. Let's take a look at our current Bush Grand National Series point standings. After 20 of 31 events on the $11 million tour, Little E, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a 13-point advantage over Matt Kenseth, the youngster. There's the veteran Mike McLaughlin, some 51 points back. And take a look, 6 through 10, just 83 points separate Phil Parsons from Hermie Sadler in 10th spot. Let's check in once again, down in the pits with Marty Reed. Yeah, well, helmets are on, the nets are up, but uh, starting fourth on the grid tonight, Elton Sawyer and the Barbersaw Ford. Elton, a very good qualifying run, and you've had some good success on the, this tr short track here at IRP in the past. Yeah, Marty, uh, I love this racetrack. Uh, we've run second here. We've sat on the pole. Uh, there's only one thing left to do, and that's win the thing, and I believe this Barbersaw Taurus has got the capabilities tonight. Uh, Jack Roush gave us a great motor. Uh, good, your tires are good. We're excited, ready to get started. A any uh, problems getting the concentration back together with this long delay? I mean, it's like a, you get ready for the game and then all of a sudden they slow it down? No, not really. Uh, you know, we, we know what's at hand. We know what we got to do. It's just a little later starting, but uh, we're ready to go. Thanks. I think they're going to be firing engines here, guys. All right, the Hoosier fans are on their feet at Indianapolis Raceway Park. What a crowd. A sold-out crowd for the 17th annual NASCAR Kroger 200. As the fireworks go off in the back stretch, that's just the beginning of the fireworks you're going to see tonight. If you just joined us, it is short track action. No, it's not Saturday night. It's Friday night. Last week, it was on Saturday night at South Boston, Virginia. We've had about a 30-minute delay because of a crack, uh, a breach in the concrete wall from an accident earlier tonight. And they have now gotten that concrete wall fixed. The drivers are cinched up, buckled in, and we're getting set for 200 laps of racing action. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Chad Little, former Bush Series driver and former Bush Series most popular driver. And there's a look at some of that Hoosier hysteria. Some of the best race fans anywhere in the world right here in the state of Indiana, and they love their short track racing action. And what a week they've had of it. The silver ground cars on Wednesday night Great story there in the DuPont 100. Jason Leffler taking a win last night, the Cummins 200. And what a scramble that was with Jack Sprague coming out on top. And of course, tonight, we finish out our Kroger Speed Fest week with the 17th running of the Kroger 200. Neil lining up on pit road. 
39 cars will start on this point six eight six mile facility brand new pavement here for the first time in 37 years they have paved this track the track opened in june of 1961 the supervised paving job back then by a man named clarence cagle a legendary man when it comes to paving he was over at indianapolis motor speedway they brought him back in here in the spring of this year to supervise the repaving of this facility and what a job they have done well let's take a look at our suzuki starting lineup on the pole his second career pole and the 18th different pole winner in 1998 roy buckshot jones alongside him the guy who's won the last two times here in the Kroger 200 randy lajoy back in row two former goodies dash series champion and what a second half of the year this young man's having linda amy alongside him you heard him talk a moment ago he's finished second here before elton sawyer back inside row three our most recent winner in the bush series competition tim fedewa from last saturday night and there's the 1994 series champion david green back to row four mike wallace only his second start in 1998 had a great run at daytona driving a car for andy petrie and beside him elliot sadler Back to row five, starting in ninth spot, Wayne Grubb, one of only two drivers to lead this race a year ago. He and the guy who won it, Randy LaJoy. And beside him, the veteran, Bobby Hiller. Row six, Mark Green, the middle of the Green Brothers. He's the in-between guy between David and Jeff. And beside him, the veteran, Mike Magic Shoes McLaughlin. Back to row seven, Kevin LePage. He will be in a Jack Roush car in a couple weeks at Michigan Speedway, the Prime Star Machine. Tonight, it's a Bush Series ride. And Patty Moise in the Rhodes Furniture Ford. Row eight shows Joe Bessie in the car number six. And our current point leader starting in 16th spot, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Back to row nine, Ed Barrier. His first Bush Series win came earlier this year at Hickory Speedway. And beside him, the Slim Jim Machine for Todd Bodine. As the field begins to roll, take a look at the rest of our starting lineup. Dave Blaney and the 1997 Indy Racing League champion, Tony Stewart. Back to row 11. The young man out of the North Series, Kevin Prince. And beside him, another man who came out of the Bush North Tour, Andy Santer, leading in the Rookie of the Year point standings. There's the veteran, Phil Parsons, the Duraloop Chevy. Beside him, Shane Hall in the car number 85 with the Big A Arto Parts colors. Tracy Leslie, who won here back in 1993, starts inside row 13 at the 1995 Bush Series Rookie of the Year is Jeff Fuller. In row 14, making only his second ever start in Bush Series competition, driving the Band-Aid Ford for Michael Walker is Mike West. Been a tough one for West, we'll tell you more about that later. And of course, Mark Crow on the outside of row 14. There's the 1993 Rookie of the Year driver, Hermie Sather, to DeWalt Chevrolet, a new father again this week. We'll tell you about their new baby in a moment. And former winner, Jason Keller. Keller won this race in 1995. And back in row 16, Lance Hooper and Matt Kenseth in the Lycos.com Chevrolet. Row 17, professional starters. There is Mike Dillon in the car number 72, the Detroit gasket machine. Curtis Markham subbing for Dick Trickle, who's overrunning the Brickyard 400. Coming up tomorrow, taking the evening off in the Dennis Shoemaker machine. There is Matt Hunter in the car number four. And Glenn Allen Jr., the 1996 Rookie of the Year, another one of our provisional starters. The car number 59, that is ASA rookie sensation Jimmy Johnson, making his Bush Series debut in the Kingsford Charcoal Chevy. For Tad Geschechter and Jeff Crow beside him in row 19. And rounding out the field in row 20, the car number 50 is Dave Brissendez. Let's check into the pits once again with Bill Weber. Well, Jerry, as you know, the short track season in the NASCAR Bush Series goes on for several weeks, and it has really shaken up the points in the last several races. Tonight, the guy that has perhaps the biggest hurdle to overcome is Matt Kenseth. He was the last guy to get into this field on speed. He starts 32nd. He also has to battle his way back up in the points. He is second right now, just 13 behind Earnhardt, but he has a long way to go to catch Earnhardt, and even a long way to get to the front. Further down pit road, here's Marty Reed. Thanks, Bill. Momentary scare for Buckshot Jones, our pole sitter, just as he was pulling out onto the track. Uh, the fire in the uh, car went away. He got it refired, and he is okay. Crew says nothing wrong. All right, one to go from Carl Simmons, our NASCAR Bush Series flagman. 
Now on the end car cameras, there is Mike Dillon's car number 72 starting back in 37th spot. The truck gasket in car, the Minute Maid in car. And it's Jason Keller starting back in the 30th position. There is Shane Hall starting 24th in the car number 85. In car cameras, the channel lock machine. There's Kevin LePage in the car number 40. Doug Taylor machine started 13. There is Mike McLaughlin's car number 12, the Goulds Pumps in part in car camera. And there's David Green, the former series champion, starting in sixth spot in a Pontiac in the Stanley Tools Pontiac. That is the car quest in car camera, we are told. And of course, uh, Elton Sawyer, car number 38, the Barbasol machine, the Aiken Sutton Motorsport machine. Elton due for a victory. Randy LaJoy, the Bob Evans Restaurant, in-car camera, two-time and defending Bush Series champion and the defending winner of the Kroger 200. Glad to have you with us. We should set for 200 laps of racing action, NASCAR, Bush Series style. Buckshot Jones got a great start there. You can see him already pulling out to get his preferred line going into turn number one. against the wall. I noticed in the truck race just last night, they were able to run down low, and that was the result of the new pavement. Buckshot Jones leads the first time by. They have 48 feet of width to race on here with this new graduated pavement. Hemi Fiedel will get the car a little bit out of shape. There is Lyndon Amick in the car number 35 on the bottom, and Buckshot is just moving away. Buckshot says the first one the 200 laps wins. And I'm in a hurry. I got a busy day tomorrow. 200 laps will go faster, too, if there's no cautions. If there's no cautions. Side by side action. Teammates feed him up and LaJoy. Both of them driving for base motorsports. And Bill Gardner out of turn four. It'll be, boy, that's the way they finished last week in South Boston. Feed will won the race. And LaJoy finished second. guys have the same stuff when the cars are just that even. That's yeah, impressive to see Tim run like that on the bottom. It's a tough place to get your car hooked up on the bottom like that. you got to get out of the gas more with a guy on the outside. He can keep his motor revved up better. He's got a preferred line coming out of the corner. Uh, IRP is just a track that the outside group usually works better. If you see a guy down low running good like that, like Tim's getting a shot right there, you know he's hooked up well. I think if Tim was ahead of Randy right now, he'd probably pull away from him. I'm impressed with is the fact that the paving job and the white and blue is allowing us to see side-by-side -side racing lap after lap here. We saw it in the truck series last night in the Cummins 200. Now we see it in the early laps of the Bush Series event. Vita will take the spot away. Now let's see if LaJoy can sneak back to the inside. machine for Tim Fido, a two-time winner here in 1998, and he pulls away somewhat from LaJoy. You're wondering where Buckshot is. Well, he's about a straightaway away. Where's our point leader? Well, there is the car number three currently being shown in 16th position. Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's exactly where he started. And Luke is up just a couple cars ahead of him, that number six car. I believe last week uh, there was an incident between the two of them, wasn't there? I think I remember that somewhere, reading about that. There is Ed Barrier, Jimmy Means prepared car, number 77. He's in between them in 15th spot. Bill Weber wasn't kidding when he said Big E, Earnhardt, had uh, served notice the little guy to use his head tonight, keep his head screwed on. I think he's being very, very patient early on. slowed a moment ago in the max break. That was the Kevin Prince machine. And he is headed for pit road as you watch this action. That is 14th, 15th, and 16th. Joe Bessie in the car number six, the power team machine. There's LePage in the 40 car. He's in the 13th spot, the channel lock car for Doug Taylor. Well, there's Timmy Fiedewa. 
our most recent winner in Bush Series competition, and there's the guy they're all chasing in the double zero, the Alka Seltzer Pontiac from Roy Buckshot Jones, our leader here in the early laps at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Back with more live Bush Series action in a moment. Indianapolis Raceway Park, 27-year-old Buckshot Jones taking the Alka Seltzer Pontiac, giving a lot of upset stomachs to the guys behind him because he is absolutely pulling away. Now, the closest guy to him is our most recent winner in Bush competition. That would be the Kleenex machine. Up, uh, Timmy Peter, there is Buckshot in the Bayer car. And about a straightaway back was Fita. Well, now, here's a lot of racing action. Back in the pack, side-by-side -side action, the 36 car, the Stanley machine of David Green. Trying to make a move inside of Elton Sawyer, and he will get the position. Take a look at our field summary. The number in parentheses is of where these cars started. See David Green started sixth early in seventh spot. Mike Wallace moved up a spot from seventh to sixth in the Oakwood Holmes Chevrolet. As you watch these cars move around this racetrack, Chad Little, you drove here three times, and this place was very, very tight. Basically a one-groove racetrack until the retake. Yeah, like we talked about earlier, when the asphalt was old, you had to run where the most grip was. That was up high where you didn't have to pinch your car off. You didn't have to apply a lot of steering angle. Right up next to the wall, all the way around. Or now you're able to run down low, even get down below the yellow line there, as, you, as we saw in the in-car camera view. Or you can run up high. So you have a lot of different choices now. It just depends on how you have your car set up. If you can get your car set up to turn well in the middle, then you have the option to, to run a little bit lower. And uh, I think that'll make for uh, those options. will will give a car a better opportunity to pass into the race. Elton Sawyer on the inside. He's being passed. And here's a battle for second spot. Lyndon Amick in the car number 35. You need to give a good call to young uh, Lyndon Amick, too. He doesn't have a lot of bush experience, and he's racing right next to somebody who has been involved in bush for a long time. So Lyndon's doing a great job tonight. Let's check in on the Amick pit with Marty. Well, we had uh, got to be honest with you, Doc. We're not over at Lyndon Amick's pit. We had talked to uh, Timmy Fito, and you had mentioned that the Alpha Seltzer car, a Buckshot Jones, was giving everybody gas, but they weren't crying in the Kleenex mobile because uh, they were running pretty good. But all of a sudden, he's uh, falling back a few spots. The guy that I've just checked in on is Elton Sawyer. He is dropping back very quickly. The team says the car has tightened up quite a bit. Well, thank you, Marty. You saw Elton Sawyer losing positions. They were passing him two and three a lap. So you know that uh, as well as that car runs, he certainly is having his trouble. Well, we're into the race about 30, 35 laps now, I believe. And it's to the point where you're going to know what your car is doing. The race starts. You're not talking to your crew a lot. You're waiting to see how the car handles and what you can information you can give them on what's going on. Now you've probably been able to set, tell them, okay, my car's a little tight, my car's a little loose. The crew's getting ready to make their adjustments or thinking about what adjustments to make. All right, here's a look at Dale Earnhardt in the AC Delco Chevrolet. He is now being shown in a left spot. McLaughlin behind him in a 34 car back in 12. Earnhardt making a move on Mark Green in the Timberwolf machine. Clarence Brewer on car. That is the car directly in front of Earnhardt. Now, he is being very, very, very patient early on. And I'm sure they preached a lot of patience to this young man, knowing he had a pretty good race car. Let's see if he can make the pass on the inside. Pulls it down almost effortlessly and slides right underneath Mark Green. Well, there comes Mark back on the outside. That's a good example of how the guy on the outside can keep his motor RPMs revved up a little bit higher because he doesn't have to pinch his car off so aggressively coming out of the corner or right through the center. So it makes it look like he's got a heck of a lot more horsepower coming out of the corner, but he really doesn't because his RPMs, his motor is wound up a little bit better as he comes out. All right, here's the battle of car number 77 and 30. That is Todd Bodine in the 30. Ed Barrier in the Lear machine, or Taurus. And a Chevrolet, Monte Carlo. NASCAR taking a look at the car number 77. There have been some reports from some of the spotters that something may have been leaking out of that car. That's why we don't see anything, so no black flag, thankfully. Lyndon Amick, former NASCAR Goodies Dash Series champion. Only his eighth start, we're talking about the driver, that car number 35 there in second spot. Only his eighth start.
start here in 1998. And a fourth at Myrtle Beach and a ninth at South Boston in his last two outings. This young man has really come on. You know, might be wondering why we're talking about second and just showing second place there. It's because first place has just plain checked out. He is gone. Buckshot Jones right now is about a full straightaway ahead of everybody else. The battle for second on back is as tight as it is. There's a look at Randall LaJoy. Started second, currently back in third spot. Two consecutive poles here at IRP. Two consecutive wins. Dominated last year. He led 172 of 200 laps in route to his victory a year ago. And he's now moving in or trying to move in. And here back behind him is the battle. David Green making a move underneath the car number 33 of Fiedema. That is for fifth position. Behind them, Elliot Sadler in seventh spot. Now Green and Fiedema will bump just a, a bit. Here comes Fiedema battling back on the outside. complete of 200, which comprised the Kroger 200 NASCAR Bush Series event. Now David Green will have the position, feed him up, back in sixth spot, that puts Elliot Sadler in seventh, and the car number 83, that's Wayne Grubb in eighth spot. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. now, he will battle for position, that will be for the ninth spot, trying to make a move under Bobby Hillett. shower Chevy for Hillen. As our leader now begins to pull up on some lap traffic. The double zero, the mayor, out the Seltzer Pontiac of Roy Buckshot. Works heavy traffic. We'll work a break. Back in just a moment. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana. Our leader, the double zero, Roy Buckshot Jones, now beginning to catch the tail of the field and try to put some of the guys a lap down. Let's check in on his pitch with Marty. Well, guys, he is running laps when he was in the open in the 23-second range. In fact, he even clicked off a 22-9, which is only eight-tenths off his qualifying time. But now that he has caught up to the back of the pack, it is dropped off by half a second. That could allow some of these guys trying to track him down to catch up. Some of those guys out there are going to need him to be in a lot of traffic at the pace that he's set because there isn't anybody that even can challenge him. I, I haven't seen a runaway like this in a long time. Looked like the car may have bobbled a little bit coming off of turn two. Here's our lap comparison last time by Jones. Now having to follow that traffic in front of him, 104 miles an hour. And you see Amick, look at Amick over 100, almost 106 and a half, or over 106 and a half. What about our points leader? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Slowly, meticulously, patiently picking him off one by one. He's just gone by 10 feet to him. And that would be for the seventh position. Earnhardt Jr. is seventh. Vitoa is eighth. There is Grubb in ninth in the Link Belt Chevrolet. Bobby Hillen Jr. back in 10th spot. The young man, who is our point leader, started back in 16th spot. Moving up through the field as good as anybody is right now. How about some of the other veterans here in the Bush series? I told you that uh, Joe Bessie, there's Bessie in the uh, power team car number six. He's back in 18th position, getting a challenge there by the car number 17 of Matt Kinza. Matt Kinza's qualified 32nd and he's now running in the 18th position. He's probably moved up more than anybody else right now. That car, he's really on a move. Sad, we've had the advantage of watching Matt come through the field here, and he's patiently picked off these cars. Now, you know how frustrating it can be as a driver after qualify on your race setup, but apparently their race setup must have been pretty good. It didn't help in qualifying, but it's working extremely well here. Don't you think? Matt to have gone through that much traffic in 35 or 40 laps, he has got a great race set, set up underneath that car. He's had to race cars, you know, high and low. Uh, he hasn't had the benefit of having a wide open track, so he's really hooked up. We'll have to wait and see later on in the race, but I think when, uh, when things settle down, we're going to see the 17 car uh, up there in the front. All right, pretty good battle here between Wayne Grubb and the car number 83. 
see us side by side with Fidua. Wayne Grubb, who was our pole center up in Richmond, Virginia, early in the year, had a great run, set on the pole and finished fourth. The young man, just 21 years of age. A lot of talent there in the Grubb family. Wayne and Kevin, the brothers. Riding along with a channel lock in car camera on board. That is Kevin LePage and Doug Taylor's car number 40. Kevin being shown in 14th position currently. Take a look at our field summary. Car number eight is Bobby Hillman in the clean shower Chevy. That car owned by a group of six Major League Baseball players. Mark McGuire, Gary Gaddy, a number of others involved with that race team. They keep the uh, big Mac attack numbers, home run numbers, there on the side of the car. Out of California, they had Mark McGuire's son come out personally and put the number on the side just prior to the race. I think back then it was 40 or 42, I believe. Good racing action all over Indianapolis Raceway Park. free so far. We should knock on wood when we say that, though. Oh, uh, you just jinxed us, Chad. <laughs> I believe now we're going to see a rash of caution flags. Last year here, there were 11 caution flags for 80 laps. 80 of the 200 laps were under yellow. Now, as far as you said, we have not seen the yellow hanky wave one time. Now, look at Kevin LePage trying to make it three wide on the inside. He's in the channel lock. The wall contact. Todd Bodine is there. Feet him up. Uh, goes around. And I told you. I shouldn't have said it. You had to say caution free. Tim, I am really sorry. Well, he's going to throw Kleenex at you. I <laughs> promise you. What a tough break for Tim Feet. We're bringing out the first caution flag tonight here on lap number 49. We'll see it on a replay because the cameras were right on top of that, but I don't believe it was anything but just a racing deal. Look how tight these cars are right in here. This is about 10th place on. Yep, you saw Tim just come down a little bit, make it just a little bit of contact with the 30 car. There's no room at the Raceway Park here to, once you get bumped like that, we saw it in the truck race last night, and Tim's hardened into the wall in turn number one. Once again, different angle this time. Todd Bodine is the Slim Jim driver. There is Fido's car, and Bodine, the contact. LePage is there. Boy, Ed Barrier did a great job to get on the brakes. Not to run into the back of Fito's car to spun around. Oh, look at there. Heavy, heavy damage for Tim Fito. He was fifth in the point standings coming into the night. Just 89 points behind LaJoy. Here's our leader on pit road, and Marty Reed is there. Yes, guys, and it's a perfect timing for this yellow. We were wondering why he was having trouble getting around some of this uh, slower traffic. He was reporting that it was getting tight from the center out. And you can see that they're going to take a turn, a wedge out, one full turn. And Bill Weber, what's happening at your end? continuing there under the first caution flag today there is buckshot's crew having completed their service on the bear there is randy lejoy exiting pit road behind the mike mclaughlin car made a significant chassis adjustment on buckshot's car you gotta wonder as well as that car was running why you would want to touch it but i guess they want to get just a little bit better working the first caution flag of the night at indianapolis raceway park into a spin by tim fiedler back with more in a moment Welcome back to Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana. Working the first caution flag tonight. There's a look at the guy who's dominated the first 52 laps. Now, what happened to bring out the yellow? We'll show you once again. Take a look left side of your screen. Tom Bedines in the, or Tim Fito was on the outside there with Todd on the inside. You can see they just got together going into turn one and Fito up slams into the outside wall uh, pretty darn hard. He's okay though and um, uh, the car's not. It's going to be a short night for him, but just a racing deal right there. It's, it's hard to say whose fault it is. All right, take a listen real time. Boom. Ouch. Well, the green flag waves once again. As Fido was crew will work on that car, we'll try to get a comment from him just momentarily as we go back to green flag racing. Linda Amick in the car number 35 being shown as our leader here. Flashing by at about 108 to 109 miles per hour. They qualified at 111. There's a look 
Pontiac at the Scana, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Tourism Pontiac. Berlin and Amick. They shuffle up back for third spot. This is the first time ever for young Lyndon Amick uh, to lead a Bush Series race, too. We talked about earlier that uh, uh, he's doing so well for, for a young driver and not, not a lot of uh, Bush Grand National starts. And this is the first time he's ever led. So hopefully, hopefully he's putting it all out of his mind and um, just thinking about uh, what's going on there and uh, not, a, not the fact that, hey, this is the first time I've ever led a Bush race. Oh, he's got to be thinking about this is this is this is great. There's Mike Wallace making a move on Bobby Hillen in the car number eight. Wallace is the 15, the Oakwood Holmes car. Out on the inside. Last time Wallace ran here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, he won the race back in 1994. Only his second start in the Bush Series. Normally, of course, as you heard Marty say earlier, he drives in the Grassman Truck Series. Here later, Pure One Filter Machine for Kenny Schrader. Oh, he was a little bit loose. He gathered it back in. That's our tread cam buried in the asphalt. And that gives you chills if you have nightmares. It's not our fault. Cars come and run over you. The tread cam. Elliot Sadler in second. Hillen is third. Wallace is fourth. David Green fifth in the car number 36. There is Green. Stanley Tools on board camera. Boy, what a run Green is at since coming into the Bush Series, coming back to the Bush Series. Here is the power team machine, the Chevy of Joe Bessie sliding off the turn. That's turn number two there, coming off the turn number two against the inside wall on the back straightaway. Now we'll bring out caution for the second time here on lap 59. G-metal damage on the left side of Bessie's machine. There is the car number 44 of Tony Stewart in the Shell Pontiac, Joe Gibbs' own car. Damage the rear of that machine. We'll try to find out what happened and why the six car spun out there, but uh... let's see if we can see what happened again here. This was over in turn two. Well, obviously, the 44 car had to check up, as did Joe Bessie there, and then the 34 car of Mike McLaughlin just got into the back of him. Uh, can't tell exactly why they had to slow up. A little different angle. It's already Bessie had already had already been tagged, and so had. Uh, 44 had gotten hit from behind Stewart by McLaughlin. Now here is Tony Stewart on pit road, the 1997 Indy Racing League champion. As the crew now taking a look underneath that car number 44 to see if there how much damage there may have been from that contact from the back and the front. Working the second caution flag tonight at Indianapolis Raceway Park. 60 laps are complete. Our leader is Linda Damon. We'll be right back. Back in Indianapolis Raceway Park, Marty Reed, Bill Weber, Chad Little, and here's truly Jerry Punch bringing you exciting Bush Grand National Series action. Second caution flag tonight due to this incident here coming off of turn two. It's from Randy LaJoy's in-car camera. All we can see there is the 44 car and the, and the six car of Joe Bessie having some contact, but what, what it's not showing is, is that everyone kind of checked up there. McLaughlin got in the back of, uh, of the 44 car and sent the six into the inside wall. Now here's Bessie a moment ago. We were in break going out to the 44 car and pointing. In that second replay, it looked like there may have been some contact between the 44 and the six, and the six car got a little bit out of shape, and then the 44 tried to slow up to let him get it caught, and he got hit from behind. So I that may be right. right. He was upset. Yep. There was some contact coming off turn two. Well, there is the remains of the power team Chevrolet. Some damage on the right and left of that car. Back with more live Bush Series action in just a moment. Our speed road coverage of exciting Bush Grand National Series action from Indianapolis Raceway Park is being brought to you by WD-40. There's a whole mess of reasons to clean up with WD-40. And by Wagner. Not just a better way to paint, a way to paint better. And we are set to go green as they uh, are showing the car number 35 of London Amick as the lead car. The car number 50 up there, that is Dave Resendez. And he is being shown in 34 spot, one lap down. Still 33 cars on the lead lap. Lap cars always start on the inside. Bush Grand National Analyst to cover us. 
Sadler being shown in second spot in the 66. Amick takes off in the Pontiac. Sadler gives chase in a Chevy. Lyndon Amick took on two tires in the previous caution just about 10 laps ago. So it'll be interesting to see how they hold out as, uh, as we get into this uh, green flag racing a little bit more. Let's check it in pits. So we're built up and caught up with Joe Benzie. And Joe is quiet from his car. Joe, what happened out there? What did you see? I'm not really sure. The guy said 44 got into me and I went out to see Tony and he pointed to his back bumper and it's all caved in. So somebody probably got into him. I don't know. Just thought I just real rough. I had it. Somebody hit me. Got me sideways. I got it turned around. Saved. And somebody just finished me off afterwards. Rough night. Yeah, rough week or so for him. And uh, with AJ Boyd looking on, it's a it's a tough uh, tough night for Joe Bessie here at IRP. Here. Here's uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the car number three, making a move underneath Glenn Allen. That's fifth, sixth, and seventh place right there. 99 car of Allen being shown a lap down in 35th, but a great run. There. There's uh, Elliott Sadler, the 66 car. He is in second spot. Great run for Bobby Hillen in the car number eight, the clean shower machine. Now, I told you there were some NFL or some Major League Baseball players involved in that car. As you watch this battle here on the racetrack. Jr. trying to make a move on the Stanley car. There is the car to break we're talking about in third spot. We told you Mark McGuire was involved. Kyle Morris, Kansas City Royals, Pete Shurick from the Houston Astros, Gary Gaetti, the Cardinals third baseman, Cardinal catcher, Danny Schaefer involved. right along the Channel One car, making a move inside of the Duraloop Chevy. Kevin LePage here battling for position. That's for 21st and 22nd spot. Here is David Green in the 36 car. That he is in fifth position and getting a challenge on the outside by the AC Delco Chevy and Earnhardt will have the line off of turn two.
2017, a two-time winner here in 1998. We're talking about Matt Kenseth. Won at Rockingham early in the year. And, of course, won out at Pikes Peak on the beautiful one mile out there just south of Colorado Springs. Didn't qualify well tonight, but his car is really hooked up for the race, and he's moving up well. That's Herbie Sadler right in front of him in the DeWalt Chevrolet. Herbie's had a fairly eventful week. position Bobby Hillen in the car number eight is in third spot trying to hold on and Dale Earnhardt Jr. just turns that car to the inside now a moment ago he tried it on the outside Earnhardt's car is sticking awfully well let's check in their pits boy you're not kidding Jerry and a couple of things to keep in mind on Earnhardt Jr. one he's never raced here before they did come and test but not with this car so he's never been in this car on this track and race conditions the second thing is last a four-way battle for the lead. Earnhardt in fourth place trying to get around Hillen and trying to chase down the leaders, Amick and Elliott Sadler. So Earnhardt Jr. is being patient, but Elliott Sadler sure is, and he just went by Amick like he... I guess it's time. I'll see you later. Now we'll see if Earnhardt can make the move inside for third position. Elliott Sadler is our leader as they are battling side-by-side side for third spot. It is Sadler, Amick, and too close to call for third. Back with more from Indianapolis Raceway Park in a moment. Well, folks, that shot right there should tell you one thing. We are under caution once again for the third time today here on lap 85, and that's the back. That's uh, that's the bumper cam for Shane Hall and the Big A Auto Parts machine, Don Stegall's car. Here's what happened just a moment ago. We're on board with Shane right here. That's in between turns three and four. And you can tell Shane got a, a shot from a pretty solid shot from behind and just uh, backed it in, in, in between the wall there and turns three and four. Putting his hand up there saying, what is the deal? Well, you know you're in trouble when you're suddenly watching where you're going and suddenly you're watching where you've been. Indicating he got a little tag from behind and boy, heavy damage on the back of the big A auto parts car number 85. He and Tracy Leslie getting together. Leslie, the 1993 winner here of the Kroger 200. Well, back with more action in just a moment. We'll check in on pit stops when we come back. Back in Indianapolis Raceway Park working the third caution flag of the day. There's a leader, Elliott Sadler, the Trop Arctic Chevrolet. Fourth race he's led in 1998. One of the cars that pitted a moment ago, Marty Reed, was this car right here, the 38 of Elton Sawyer. Boy, and Doc, they have had their hands full on the Barbersaw Ford. Elton was reporting that the car felt like it either had a sway bar that was broken or a shock. They got in underneath it and said, no, there's no problem. But they think that the ratchet that they use in there locked up, and that's what's creating the problem. He's 20th right now. All right, thank you, Marty. We'll keep an eye on that. Possibly a ratchet problem, maybe a sway bar problem, the 38. Elliott Sadler, last led at Texas Motor Speedway back in April of this year. Fourth race he has led for the year. Linda Amick right behind him in a Pontiac. Bobby Hillen running awfully strong in the clean shower, car number eight. I believe the first three cars there all took on two tires on the um, a couple of cautions ago. So we're back to Earnhardt Fourth, the first car that took on four tires. It's surprising to see those guys still running so strong and just taking on two tires. I heard that one of the truck drivers that ran real strong last night ran all 200 laps without taking on Whoa, left sides. As we see the... <laughs> I just mean to jump in on you, Chad, there, but uh, Mike McLaughlin get a little dirt track in there. They're battling for eight spot, and he got the car about 30 degrees out of shape and gathered it back in. It's not over yet. There's Wayne Grubb in the link belt car. Matt Kenseth is there. LaJoy is there with the onboard. There's the 17 car on the right side. All right, a challenge for second spot. Here is Hillen looking to the inside of Amick. Amick slides up a little bit, and Chad, Hillen may have a shot. On the back stretch. And folks, you guys see what we do. I uh, don't know what caused it yet, uh, but you can tell there's cars everywhere, debris all over the place. 
There is the Phil Parsons car. Mark Green is involved. The four, that is Matt Hutter. Debris all over the back straightaway as the, now the leaders will work their way through and try to slow down. Carl Simmons feverishly waving the caution flag back here at the start finish line. That brings out the fourth caution flag today here on lap number 92. You see the NASCAR official down there waving the red flag. That's the flag that says whether the pits are open or not. Oh, there is the Duraloom Chevy for Phil Parsons. See if we can see what happened. Parsons already sideways. Looks like some contact behind him. There's Mark Green's car. And then Mark Green slides backwards to blocked the track and that's where it all um, that's when it got real dirty curtis markham trying to get by on the inside he ends up getting involved here's real time that was from kevin lepage's channel lock in car camera the duck taylor machine lepage stayed up high and was able to get by now, there's all that debris on the back stretch. We would imagine that most of the guys who only took on two tires before would want to pee at pit. Here's the car number 37. That is Mark Green as they are running along beside the car. Through now. See if they can possibly get some repair done there. We are hearing that maybe some of the leaders may pit for their other two tires. There is the leader, Elliot Sadler, in the car number 66. Gary Beck, the long machine. Linda Amick behind him, as you heard. Chad Little say a moment ago, these guys had only pitted one time. They came in on lap 49 for two tires. Still no pit stops and a lot of debris to be cleaned up on the back stretch. We'll come back with more. Working the fourth caution flag tonight at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, uh, working the fourth caution flag tonight. Now that is the debris that's on the back straightaway. The caution came out on lap number 92 for contact among at least a half a dozen cars. Those involved include Phil Parsons, car number 10, the Duraloop car, the Timberwolf machine of Mark Green, number 37, Curtis Markham's car number 64, the 40 car, Kevin LePage, able to get by up high with minimal, if any, at all sheet metal damage. Matt Hunter, we saw him walking back a moment ago toward the Lance Pits. He's subbing for Jeff Purvis, serving that four-week suspension. Our leader is the car number 66. That is Elliot Sadler in the Pop Arctic Chevrolet. Let's see if we might be able to check one more angle and maybe see what happened here on the backstretch. We're inside Elton Sawyer's car right now in real time. Some good sound effects there. All right, different angle looking up the backstretch. Mike Bliss able to scoot by in the Band-Aid car. Look at Green. He gets up on the right front fender of Curtis Markham's car, the Snyder trucking machine. There's Lance Hooper going by. Oh, heavy damage on Phil Parsons' Duraloop machine. Phil Parsons came in sixth in the point standings. As we check in once again with Marty Reed. Well, an update on Elliot Sadler. Remember, he only put right side tires on. And uh, if you remember last night's truck race, uh, Jack Sprague went the entire distance with the first set of the left side. So it'll be interesting to see if any of the teams decide to try that same strategy here in the Bush Series tonight. But uh, so far, it looks like it's going to be foul the leader. If Sadler ducks into the pits, Amex crew is ready. They pit side by side. But uh, it looks like they're going to stay out one more time, guys. And Lights are out in the base car. All right, so they're not going to pit this time, Bye. All right, let's check in with Bill Weber. A Jerry, similar situation for Bobby Hillen, as Marty pointed out. Hillen took two right side tires. They can go to about lap 156 before they will need fuel. What will they do then? I asked the crew. They said, you'll have to come watch and see. Ah, uh -huh. a little bit of intrigue here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. By the way, Here's our AutoZone race recap. Our leader, Elliot Sadler, has led 16 of 97 laps. There have been two lead changes, four cautions for a total of 17 laps. That's why the average speed is down to 78.042 miles per hour. Our leaders, Jones, Amick, and Elliot Sadler. Off the track, there are the cars involved. Mark Green, Parsons, Hutter, Bessie, and Fidua, along with the entries of Hall and Prince that are out of the race. Still cleaning up some of the debris in the backstretch. So let's check in with Bill. I think he's caught up with Phil Parsons. 
And Phil, all we could see was smoke. What happened back there? Well, a 37 car raced me back to the flag on a caution, which we're not supposed to do, and I got him in front of me. I was trying to get by him on the inside, coming off two, and we got together and around we went. We would have been okay, and then uh, four car, I'm sure there was a bunch of smoke and stuff, and he ran right in, you know, had hit us head on. So quite a bit of damage. I don't know if we can get the Dura Loop Chevy back out or not, but we'll give it a try. Okay. That's Phil Parsons. Looks like uh, they'll try and get it back out, but it could be a lot of work for their crew tonight. Oh, indeed. Now, I told you, he came in tonight in sixth in the point standings. Tim Fiedewa came in in fifth, and both those cars have had trouble and are heavily damaged. Back with more. We're under caution at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Back at Indianapolis to come in they needed a four tire change because guys he was reporting a vibration in the right front they're looking at the tires now they think they've got it fixed there's the car number 30 coming out the slim jet machine of todd Bodai. i think these guys have pit right now we are uh, we'll have a halfway point next time by they may be set to go yeah, I think so, too, Jerry, because, you know, uh, Elliot Sadler and Bobby Hillen haven't pitted yet. Uh, Lyndon hadn't pitted. They already showed that the cars that take on two tires aren't that bad and can run real competitive. We saw Earnhardt Jr. struggling to get around uh, uh, Bobby Hillen there. So now they've pitted. The guys that come in later are going to be behind them. Uh, you know, it could, it could turn out to be the move that wins them the race or, or you know, makes them have a great finish for tonight. Well, Butch Ender's been pretty soft ripping off the hood on the Andy Santer car. Guy, young man who leads the rookie of the year points that is he comes scooting back down pit road trying to lose another lap how about the car number 30 build a slim jim machine well, jerry he came in and todd bodine got left side tires and they took a spring rubber out of the right front so a lot of different strategies down here now spring rubber out of the right front what that would do is that would free up the car that would let the right front not have quite as much wheel weight on it as you go through the turn so obviously he must have been a little bit tight Look at Carl Simmons and Johnny Norton. Norton holding the cross flags there, indicating we are 100 laps into it. Halfway home in the 17th running of the NASCAR Kroger 200. So you look at our top 15. We told you that Elliot Sadler is our leader. There's Hillen in second spot. Great run for Bobby Hillen. Earnhardt Jr. from 16 starting spot to third. Mike Wallace having a good run. No foot hold machine. David Green, Stanley Tool, Pontiac. Buckshot in six, McLaughlin seven, Kenson from 32nd to eighth. Keep an eye on the car number 17. There is Grubb and LaJoy rounding out the top 10. We show you that 26 cars are on the lead lap, and that's why Andy Santer was scooting down pit road a moment ago, trying not to be put a lap down by that safety car. He is the last car on the lead lap. He comes back into the pits and will head back down pit road once again as they continue to try to pull some sheet metal away. trying to get the debris cleaned up. He just joined us. This is the fourth caution flag tonight on lap number 92. The first caution came out on lap 49. Timmy Fito up. Tagging the wall in turn one. Second caution flag 10 laps later when the car number six of Joe Bessie came into contact with the wall off of turn two. Third caution flag, lap 83. A tangle between Shane Hall and Tracy Leslie. And this caution flag on lap 92 involving six cars. Let's check in down in one of those cars pits with Bill. Well, they're actually behind the wall right now. They continue to work on Mark Green's car. Mark, we saw a lot of smoke. What happened out there? Well, Bill, we had a had a problem on our pit stop. We got in the back there. And usually have problems back in there. It's a tight race, and everybody's trying to get to the front. Uh, I don't know really what happened. I got hit there in the left rear, and of course got sideways, and we blocked the track up. You know, with nowhere to go. So, I'm uh, not really what happened. Not sure really what happened there. He still sits in the car, still belted in, but they've got a lot of work to do before they can get this car back out on the track. All right, lots of action coming your way tonight, but how about tomorrow? Look at this great crowd on hand. They got a lot of racing yet to go tomorrow. RPM today, 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN2, then on the grid at noon Eastern on ESPN, and then we come at you with our live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the fifth annual NASCAR Winston Cup Brickyard 400 at one o'clock Eastern time on ABC Sports. Then, of course, 7 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow night, we'll wrap it up with RPM tonight on the news. Lots of action. Three networks covering the action at Indianapolis Raceway Park and Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It doesn't get any better than that. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
back at Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana. I'm Jerry Punch along with Chad Little, Marty Reed, and of course, no, that's not Bill Weber, that's the moon. But we do thank the moon to Bill, and here is Joe Bessie returning in the power team Chevrolet. Getting that car hammered out back on the racetrack for you Joe Bessie fans. And here is David Green, Stanley Tools Pontiac. That is our CarQuest in-car camera for David Green, being shown in fourth position. The 1994 Bush Grand National Series champion having a great run. Driving for Team 34, Frank CC and Scott and Jeff Welliver. Fans are on their feet. Sellout crowd at Indianapolis Raceway Park as we get set for a restart here just past the halfway point.
accident action. That's Dave Blaney in the Amoco car, the ultimate Amoco machine. Pontiac, Bill Davis on car. He loops it back around. There was some contact. That's over in turns one and two, and that will bring out the fifth caution flag. Appears like it happened getting into turn one, Jerry, and they came to rest just right there in the middle of one and two. Uh, can't tell exactly what happened yet. We'll see if we have it on the replay. There's the Pontiac safety car with the field in tow. Let's see if we can see entering turn one what might have happened, Chad. Looks like a deja vu of what happened with Tim Fita earlier tonight. Uh, just a slight little contact and it's going to send someone back into the wall there. That's Lance Hooper in the WCW car. They body slammed the 5th to 93 car into the outside concrete. Elton Sawyer making a move. Boy, Mike Bliss has dodged another one. He and Lyndon Amick both able to get by and as the car, this car number 93 of Dave Blaney came back down across the racetrack. As you see Blaney's damaged car going behind the wall, one of our lead cars on pit road, the second place car, the clean shower machine for Bobby Hillen. As they go to work there, Nick Short, the crew chief on Hillen's machine, and they will change all four tires. Right side tires have already been changed. Left side tires going on, so he's down and away. We'll see if possibly the 66 car may come on the pit road. Once again, what brought the caution flag out? Riding along with Kevin LaFay, let's show you what he saw. What he saw was trouble. He just barely got it turned down low enough, too. Good job of missing it. All right, here's Elton Sawyer's Barbasol machine. He's right behind Hooper and Blaney, and he sees the contact. Ah, rear ends against rear ends, and both cars sliding. Elton Sawyer turns it hard left and avoids any further contact. Working lap 117, fifth caution flag today at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Elliott Sadler in the Philip 66 Chevy Monte Carlo, the Gary Bechtel on machine, Sandy Jones, crew chief on that car. Former Winston Cup crew chief. As you watch the work now going on, Todd Bodine, Slim Jim Chevy. Looks like they've got some confusion going on right there. Discussions as to whether they were gonna make a chassis adjustment or not on the car. You see the crew members talking among themselves a moment ago as to whether they would or wouldn't on the car number 30. Donnie Richardson's the crew chief down there. And you see that car exit. Let's check in uh, in the leader's pits with Marty. Yeah, guys, the uh, pit crew down here has stood down. They are not going to bring him in under this caution. Uh, interestingly enough, we always get to see the end result here at race time, but this crew really had a battle. They were 34th quickest in the morning practice, figured enough out to get to the eighth qualifying position, and right now they're leading this race. And remember, they have yet to change left side tire. They are still running the original laps. And those right side tires were put on on lap 49, so they have come a long way on the right sides. Elliot Sadler, younger brother of Herbie Sadler. Elliot, a three-time winner last year in Winston, or I should say in Bush Grand National Competition. He won at Nazareth, Myrtle Beach, and St. Louis. This year, his lone victory coming on the high banks of Bristol, Tennessee. Our CarQuest in-car camera with David Green. Well, I just can't help think about the kind of run he's had in that car in, in six starts. Here's his teammate, Mike McLaughlin, right behind him, the Team 34 efforts. Frank Stacey, Scott, and Jeff Welliver owning those cars, as well as the car number 30 of Todd Bodai. of David Green's car. We told you that he, this is the sixth start he's had of this Stanley Tools machine, the Stanley Tools Pontiac. He has had finishes of fourth, fourth, second, fifth, and fourth. His worst finish has been fifth in five stars. Not a bad way to come back to the Bush Grand National Series. No, and I think that's really good. It also shows that how important chemistry is, because David was having a hard time in the 96 car in Winston Cup garage. And, you know, he comes back over here and, and look at how good he's doing. So it just shows that it's not David Green, it's not the 96 team in the Cup garage, it's just the chemistry. It takes 
chemistry. I, would I talked to David after that situation happened where he split with the 96 team, the, the Caterpillar team with Buzz McCall. He said, you know, it's sort of like what happened with Kenny Wallace a few years ago when he came up and, and drove with Felix Sabatis and had trouble, just didn't have the right chemistry, went back to the Bush Series, got his confidence back, won races, proved to people that he could drive a race car, and then came back with the right situation in Winston Cup. Maybe that'll happen with David. There's a look at the team car, the Slim Jim machine for Todd Bodine. As we continue to work, the fifth car should fly today. Let's check in once again with Bill Webb. About to go green. Todd Bodine had a flat left rear. That's why they changed the lefts before. They just changed the rights, and they sat on pit road talking about making two chassis adjustments at the same time. They wanted to make sure they had the right adjustments before they went back out. Carl Simmons waved the green flag. Now, Dave Resendez could be the spoiler here. He's in the 50 car, the Dr. Pepper machine, and he is trying to get back on the lead lap. That time by, he had a nose in front of Elliot Sadler. This time, Sadler will have the advantage. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the three car is second. Mike Wallace looks to the inside. There's the lap car of Resendez. Wallace is third. Buckshot is fourth. car of David Green. The car question car for the Stanley Pontiac. Sure is impressive how uh, Elliott's been able to hang on to the lead there with um, still only uh, changing two tires back at lap number 49 or 50. And he's pulled away by a couple of car lengths from Dale Earnhardt Jr. machine, the Aiken Sutton Motorsports car for Elton Sawyer. How about it, Marty? Well, guys, he's on the move. I think he's just passing for 10th position. Remember, he was 30th. And remember, we told you about the problems that they had a ratchet. Well, whatever it was, the crew wishes they could take the credit, but it has broken free. The car is freed up, and he is moving. Oh, indeed. We will keep an eye on Elton Sawyer, who's finished second here. He has a second place and two fourth place finishes here in 1998. He has to get his first win this year in that car. Meanwhile, back up front is Elliott Sadler and Dale Earnhardt Jr. They have pulled away somewhat from the third place car. Here's a battle went Randy LaJoy in a 74, waging war with Wayne Grubb in the car number 83. That's the Link Belt Chevrolet. I'm impressed with Wayne Grubb and Kevin Grubb, his brother. Both these young men, pretty good race car drivers, to be just 21 years of age. Very good. All right, there's Ray for ninth place. Uh, they weren't racing when I was in the Bush Series, and they have come on really strong in just a short period. Bobby King is the crew chief for both these cars, and certainly that helps a lot. That experience, that maturity in getting these cars set up. And now Joy will have the advantage of trying to take the spot away. They were battling for eighth position. There is Elton Sawyer. Well, Joy says, I gotta go, because this Elton is coming in a hurry. They're gonna look back past the grub car, and right behind him is Sawyer. And you heard Marty say, whatever was wrong with Elton's car has apparently been fixed, because he's moving. Well, these two guys are getting to move away from the third place car. That is Buckshot Jones. There is Sadler, Earnhardt Jr., Jones, Mike Wallace, and David Green in the top five. Less than 75 laps remaining here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. There have been five caution flags. There's, once again, LaJoy. As he sees in his rearview mirror, Matt Kenseth is coming his way in the car number 17. Getting a little racy up there. And well, I've been patient long enough. Dad's watched me and said, okay, I'm patient. Now I can go play. <laughs> he just joined us. Elliot Sadler has made only one pit stop. He changed right side tires only. That coming on lap 49, and they have not changed the left sides whatsoever. Bernard Jr. in the AC Delco Chevrolet, the Tony Urey prepared car, running in second position in front of a sellout crowd, Indianapolis Raceway Park. 
17th annual NASCAR for over 200. Longest continuous sponsorship of a Bush race in the history of the series. Both the folks involved here for 17 consecutive years. side action that for ninth position Grubb and Sawyer Grubb's car Jimmy's a little bit shutters and that make it Sawyer a chance to climb on the inside Grubb comes back in the throttle and pulls Sawyer by a car into the half meanwhile back up front battles all over this racetrack ah Chad he's sneaking more and more to the inside Elk Sawyer for the last couple laps was running on the inside Dale was trying the outside now Elliott's kind of running in the middle and Dale's trying the inside. Uh, like I said earlier, I think Dale's a little quicker right now. Uh, he's showing a lot of patience to try to get around that uh, the 66 car of Elton Sawyer. All right, sixth position up for grabs here. There's LaJoy and McLaughlin. Call it LaJoy as they slide by the damaged car of Tracy Leslie involved in an incident earlier. Now LaJoy will take six spot away. Back up front, here is Earnhardt on the inside. Down in turn three, can he get it to stick on the inside of the racetrack? Yes, he's back in the throttle. He will slide up, Sadler will slide up. Fans are on their feet, and here's Elliott pulls him down the straightaway. Elliott took his groove away that time as it went into turn one. What I mean by that is Elliott knew he was running a little bit better on the inside, and he made sure when he went down into turn number one that Earnhardt couldn't run the group that he was shown to be a little bit stronger at. They approached the damaged car of Joe Bessie. They waved that blue and green move-over flag. Bessie pulled down out of the way. The lead cars. Dale Earnhardt Jr. looks high, looks low. Andy Santer's car on the inside. Now they've got some open track in front of them. We'll see if Earnhardt Jr. will take a run and gets the back in the throttle. Pulls right up to the rear deck as they come by. It really shows, I think, the difference in tires right there. You saw the kind of forward bite or grip that Earnhardt was getting in the middle of the corner. You can see it again there, too. It looks like he's got more power. What it is is he's able to apply more throttle quicker. Here's where the three cars awfully good in turn three. Sather has always had the power. Can he take the groove away? No, Earnhardt will bump. He will have the inside advantage. And here comes Elliott Sadler back. It would have been Earnhardt by four feet. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes the lead. But here comes Sadler back on the inside. Oh, great racing at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the NASCAR Bush Grand National Series. I wonder if he's thinking about last week at South, at South Boston Speedway. He's just probably thinking about hanging on that steering wheel and keeping those wheels headed the right direction. I think he was thinking about it, to tell you the truth. I mean, uh, I think he summed it up good in his interview. He said, hey, that's the way I drive, and that's the way it's going to be. Uh, he wasn't showing a lot of patience, but when you've got a good race car, it's easy to show patience because, you know, you know you can pass him. It's just a matter of time. Well, he's a talented young man, and irrespective of his impatience a week ago, he's got a great head on his shoulders for understanding what racing's all about and why wouldn't it? back in the racetrack. This is for 13th position. Channel Watch Chevy riding along with Kevin LePage. In front of him is the Band-Aid Ford. That is Mike Bliss. In car number 21, Bliss running in 14th position. Mike Bliss, the winningest, all-time winningest driver in Indianapolis Raceway Park. He has 10 victories here. Five in the sprint cars, three in the silver crown, and two in the midgets. making his second start in Bush Series competition. Started the Kevin Swartz car out in California, qualified at 12th, had a good run going, he had problems in the pits, ended up finishing 26th. There's LePage in the Channel One car, the car number 40, 56 car underneath him, that is Jeff Grove. They are battling for 15th position. Grove was in 15th, LePage would like to take it away. Mike Wallace in the car number 15. That's the Oakwood home Chevy. His car starting to slip and slide up across the racetrack. David Green says one more slip and I may be able to stuff this Stanley Pontiac right down beneath you. And if he does, Randy LaJoy will go by because they'll kick the door open. Well, look at Randy. They've been able to pull below the yellow line. That's 
what a, that's what repaving a racetrack will do. Oh, they have done a great job here repaving this facility. Clarence Cable and the folks, for the first time in 37 years, what a job and what a race here, Bush Fisher Restyle. As you watch the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth, back with more live racing action in just a moment. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, there are 50 laps to go, and our leader, AC Delco Chevrolet driver, Bert Dale Earnhardt Jr., and we have a car in the wall that is Dave Resendez in the Dr. Pepper machine. Washington Irving on the car as he loops it back around, gets refired. Doesn't look like it, it was much of any damage on that car. That will bring out caution flag number six. You're on lap 150. Here's a replay of what happened with Dave Resendez. We're just getting the tail end of it there. We can't really see what turned him around. And like Dr. Punch said, just very little damage. All right, now we expect with, with now just 50 or like make that 49 laps remaining that we would see probably those final pit stops. Watch for Earnhardt Jr. to come in, Elliot Sadler to come in. Pit work, very, very critical. And as you heard Chad Little tell you, the tire rule tonight was two sets, two per position. I don't think any of these leaders have used up nearly that many tires. No, but Lyndon Amick, remember, took on his his second set at an earlier caution, so that'll probably put him up to the lead of all the other leaders come in. Here's Mike Wallace in the Oakwood Holmes car. He was running in fourth position. He is down pit road. His car was beginning to skate somewhat up across the racetrack. As that crew comes out across the wall, that's the Andy Petrie on the team. I don't think they're going to pit, Jerry. The, those leaders that are up there right now, um, they're seeing how good tire wear is. They're seeing how good Elliott Sadler's been running up there in front. And they, I don't think they're going to come in and give up the track position. Left side tire is now going on the car number 15. Mike Wallace subbing for Kenny Schrader. He subbed for Schrader at Daytona when Schrader was injured, had that uh, contact with the wall and injured his sternum, finished 11th. Drove awfully well down there with very minimal practice in the car. Just got in the final practice to run that 300 mile down there in during speed weeks, and now he comes on and off pit road. Matt Kenseth has been on pit road as well in the car number 17. Just a reminder, coming up next, the top of the hour, Sports Center. Update you on all the happenings around sports, around the world, including action here, racing action, in and around Indianapolis. Indianapolis Raceway Park and Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That is coming up next at the conclusion of our coverage of the 17th running of the NASCAR Bush Grand National Series Kroger 200. Back with more in just a moment. Well, back at Indianapolis Raceway Park in Claremont, Indiana, interesting pit strategy here. They Earnhardt Jr. car did not stop. Elliott Sadler did not stop. you got to wonder, we are less than 50 to go. If they were going to stop, that would have been the most opportune time to come in for fresh rubber. Well, two reasons why I believe. One is, is we have a new surface here, which is not abrasive on tires like the old one was. Second reason is, is Goodyear has a great tire here that's not wearing out. Otherwise, you'd see these guys, you know, normally in Winston Cup racing, I mean, we don't have tire rules because we put them on whenever we can get them. But obviously tonight the tires are wearing so good they don't feel they need to stop. Elliot Sadler's still out there with 100, 100 lap right side tires and left sides that have been on the whole race. Yeah, I'll tell you where they're going to wear out some tires. How about the NHRA Drag Racing Nationals? The prolonged Northwest Nationals, 7.30 Eastern Time, Sunday afternoon on the deuce. The prolonged Northwest Nationals, the 11th annual edition, coming your way from Seattle International Raceway in Kent, Washington. NHRA Drag Racing. We go back to Green Flag Racing here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Let's check in the Sadler pits with Marty Reed. Well, Elliot Sadler, he could be a chicken waiting to get plucked out there. Remember, Jack Sprague won last night on the going the distance on left sides, but he was talking right before this uh, red yellow situation that he felt like he needed left side tires. We'll find out if they were able to cool down enough, but he's got enough rubber to go in the last 45 laps. Billy. stop. Tony Urie Jr. says basically their car is perfect. They have not made any adjustments to it throughout the evening. They've only had one stop. They put on the four tires. They're obviously paying off now. They've got enough fuel to go the distance. How about that? One 
stop. I guess if the car is dialed in that well, you put four tires on and run all, run all day. Well, when you've got a smooth surface and a, and a good tire like Goodyear's brought here tonight, you know, it can happen. All right, battle for third position. Double off buck shot in the car number double zero in the 74 car with Joy. That is the Bob Evans in car onboard camera for Randy LaJoy. LaJoy's already had a pretty busy day. He finished fourth in the finale for the International Race of Champions at 40 lapper, 100 miles at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There is Buckshot. He was the pole sitter tonight, qualifying at over 111 miles an hour. as he was the first um, 60 or 70 laps of the race, obviously. Maybe a little chassis adjustment, uh, getting cooler, a different set of tires, it's hard to say. But uh, the way he checked out at the start of that race, uh, just not quite as strong as he was then. Well, he led the first 49 laps here tonight. Actually pulled away by, by a straightaway, and then the caution came out. The spin by Tim Feeder. Well, he came in and made a tire change, was back in the pack, and really hasn't been that strong since. Well, he's still in third place. He's, he's got a, he's got a good run going on. But uh, you're right. He's not uh, he's not able to pull up on uh, on second to challenge for the lead right now. All right, Kenseth, who made a pit stop a moment ago, Bill is working his way back. He's trying to, Jerry. They've had a frustrating day. They had a bad push in qualifying, so he started 32nd. He just pitted again. He was well inside the top 10. They took a round and a half of the right rear. They think there's something wrong with the car. It keeps pushing very badly. They think they may have a left rear shock broken. Right now, he's back around the 20th position. Oh, man. Car's getting a little bit slipping and sliding here. It's getting a little bit slick out here, but less than 40 laps to go. Pretty good battle starting to brew all around this racetrack. There is Bobby Hillen as the car number 80 looks around. Mark Probe. Bring out a caution. Nope. Doesn't look like it's going to. Nope, they're not going to throw a caution. Carl Simmons says no, he's got it looped around. Joey Chipwood style, back headed in the right direction. So we'll just keep on green flag racing. As they chase Dale Earnhardt Jr., young man trying to pick up his fifth win in 1998. Show you again what happened a moment ago to Mark Krohn's car. Behind, looks like that might have been Mike Wallace as they were all trying to roll up a little bit. And Mike gets into the back of the car number 80. Gets him a does. He loops it around. Meanwhile, back up front, there is Dale Earnhardt Jr. There's a battle for 11th place. Again, with Matt Kinseth, who just has fresh tires. He took him on this last caution. Kinseth started back in 32nd position, as you heard Bill Weber tell you. Car and picked up a push. They came in and made some tire, had some tire changes. There's a 21 car, Mike Bliss. I keep on to say Michael Walter. Well, so do I. I keep stopping myself. The Band-Aid colors for Mike Bliss. Of course, Bliss subbing for Mikey Walter. We'll be running that Simco Woody Woodpecker machine at uh, the Brickyard tomorrow for the Brickyard 400. Big blue fire suit walking down pit road with a woodpecker on the back of it, and Michael Walter. I wasn't surprised at all. Only Michael could get it. Well, Kyle could probably get away with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, either of those two could do it, I'm sure. There is Kenseth in the car number 17. He is in ninth position. Here is Elton Sawyer in the 38, the Barbasol car, and the 34 of Mike McLaughlin. McLaughlin is six, Sawyer is seven. Him an eight spot is the 83 and rubber now kids it makes it three wide. wide on the bottom who's going to be smart there we go you know we heard bill comment that the 17 car matt kinseth might be having a shock problem but it doesn't appear to be affecting him too bad he's moving up pretty good through the field right now almost ready to crack into the top well he is in the top 10 right now he's in ninth place Coming up at the top of the hour, Sports Center will follow our live coverage of Bush Series action from Indianapolis Raceway Park. Riding along with McLaughlin, the Ghouls Pump Chevrolet. Looks like the tires that Kansas took on. 
on the last caution are, are really paying off for him. He seems to be the only one right now that's able to pass cars. Oh, here is Grubb spinning around and gets it spun around. Again, it does not look like NASCAR's going to throw a caution. I don't think even Chitwood can do one that well. I, he spun around, come all the way up, and didn't even nudge the wall. Came very close to it. It was good that nobody hit him. Lost about a half a dozen spots, and that was about it. Gave the fans up in turn four to show. And here's the guy they're all chasing. Let me show you again what happened a moment ago. Oh, he had a little help. A little help from my friends. Second angle, probably going to show you the same thing. That car had already got a little tap from behind from, from Kenseth and the Link Belt Chevy for Grubb. Was being shown in eighth spot. Now he has slid all the way back to 20th position. There's McLaughlin, the car number 34. He is in eighth position now. The 56 car of Crow, good run for Jeff Crow. Crow being shown in ninth position. The 10th is Mike Bliss. Once again, Earnhardt is the leader. Elliott Sadler is in second spot. The double zero. Uh, Buckshot is third. LaJoy fourth. David Green is fifth. Kenseth is sixth. The seventh place car, Elton Sawyer, eighth. In this car you're looking out the back of right now. That is the Gould's Pumps machine. For Mike McLaughlin, there's a the ninth place car. Uh, Jeff Crow in tenth spot is Mike Blitz. and made a pit stop and put on four tires. There is Mike. He is coming back up through the field. He is being shown in 11th position. Let's check in with Marty. Well, Andy Petrie, guys, made the call. He thought everybody was going to stop. So he came in. Once he had committed, he said, OK, let's do four tires, put some fuel in this baby, turn our boy loose. He's come back from 22nd to 12th. He is moving forward. Mike Wallace has three career Bush Series wins, including one right here at Indianapolis Raceway Park in his last visit back in 1994. And he is closing in on the back of that Band-Aid Ford. That would be for 10th position. That is 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th all together as we have less than 25 laps remaining in this 17th running of the Kroger 200. Now Bliss will go to the high side. Looks a high around Crow. Wallace is there. You're riding along on the bumper cam. For Mike McLaughlin. Now Crow will slide up. All right, you're Mike Wallace. You're sitting back here, Chad. You say, well, what do I do? Do I fall on Bliss? I just cut down on the inside and try to take the low bruises. I got tires. I think he's wanting to see which groove is going to move here. shuffle out and still say single file so we'll take a quick break and come back with the closing laps at indianapolis raceway park rubber bumpers more action to come when we come back in just a moment our speed road coverage of exciting nascar bush grand national series action from indianapolis raceway park is being brought to you by quaker state sensible technology what more do you need to know by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. And by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Well, we're going to save the best for last here. Battles heating up. Mike Bliss has gotten around Mike McLaughlin for position. And now McLaughlin in ninth spot trying to hold off Mike Wallace as Wallace looks to the inside. 17 laps to go at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Our leader is Earnhardt Jr. Elliott Sadler in second spot. Comfortable lead for Earnhardt Jr. 1.4 seconds over Elliott Sadler in the 66 car. There comes Sadler in second spot. Double-O buckshot being shown in third. There's the Pontiac. There's the Chevrolet of Sadler. Buckshot is back in third spot. 
fourth spot is being shown the car number 74 of LaJoy, and fifth is David Green. And here is the battle for ninth position. And Mike Wallace will take the spot away. Good run for 39-year-old Mike Wallace. They can only the second Bush Series start here in 1998, driving for Andy Petrie. Now begins to pull away from Mike McLaughlin. He will set his sights on the 21 of Mike Bliss, but laps are winding down. Our leader starting to get into some traffic now, working the inside of Kevin LePage. Now is the time when he really tests his patience. But he's got a comfortable lead, I mean, a real comfortable lead. So I don't think he's, he has to worry about too much. He just needs to bring it home right now. We're down into the closing stages of the race. Almost down to 10 laps to go, 12 right now. That's a 21st place car, Lyndon Amick, he's going by right there. Now only 20 cars to lead lap. The next car to pass will be the car number 83 of Wayne Grubb. There is Grubb. He's having an awfully good run until getting a little help from behind on a spin up in turn four. He was running in about fourth or fifth position. Here's a challenge. Bobby Hill into the car number eight. They are battling for 10th position. Clean shower, Chevy. Got the tire marks on the right front fender. Got the nose a little bit crumpled. Typical short track action. He'll, and he slides right by on the inside of Mike McLaughlin and will take the 10th position away. Laps to go. That time by Carl Simmons holding up two handfuls of fingers to our leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. Young man started back in 16th position in the AC Delco Chevrolet. He's really just had a great car all night long. Was up to the front right away, uh, passed cars right and left at the start of the race. Uh, had good pit strategy. Uh, only took on one set of tires and. Uh, He's, uh, he's just been remarkable this year. Oh, indeed. What an impressive young man he is. Looking for win number five. As you see, Mike McLaughlin really having trouble struggling with the handle on his car. He's lost another position. That one going away to Jeff Crow. Now Ed Barrier with the car number 77. The winner this year at Hickory Speedway in the Lear machine. As you take a look at our field summary with less than 10 to go. Matt Kenseth back in sixth spot from 32nd. Wallace after that pit stop climbing all the way back up to ninth. Mike Dillman in 14th position, all the way from the back of the field. Pretty good job with the Detroit gasket car. And trying to take another spot away. Just trying to make a move now inside the Gould's Pumps machine of Mike McLaughlin. Sawyer and Mike Bliss, what a job Bliss has done here at IRP. 
They are battling for position. Bliss trying to take the seventh position away. Driving for Michael Walter for the Band Aid Ford. Michael may say, I'll take a few more of these days off and relax with Buffy and the baby here and let Mike drive that car a while. White flag for Dale Earnhardt Jr. His father's best finish at IRP. Dale Sr. was a third in 1990. But the young man, the third generation driver from Kannapolis, North Carolina, at 23 years of age, looks like he is one turn away from picking up his fifth win in 1998. The crowd on their feet, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won the Kroger 200. night for a young man with incredible talent and incredible patience. As we check into their pits, I think Bill Weber is caught up with Tony Urie. Well, I, I've caught up with him, but I sure can't get his attention. He's talking to his driver. Remember, Dale Jr.'s never been here. Doesn't know where Victory Lane is. Congratulations. That's a great car and a great race again. Thanks, man. I mean, we really struggled today because we tested a different car. But I'm telling you, we all stuck together, and this is why we're going to be champions this year right here. Did you feel you had something to prove after last week, Tony? Yeah, we really meant to come here and stake the show up again. Because, I mean, if we feel like we really got one took away from us last week. But we're proud to have this as five, and it's great. Well, if they did get one taken away last week, they're taking one home tonight. Ready. All right, that was Dale. That was Tony Urey Jr. Dale Jr.'s fifth win in the past 15 starts as we go down to Victory Lane and Marty Reed. Big smile on the face of this young man. 16th to first. Nice job. Yeah, we had a good car. The AC Delco Chevrolet Monte Carlo ran good all day long. And, uh, you know, I got to thank all the sponsors on board. Coca-Cola, uh, Burger King, Food City, uh, everybody involved. I want to say to my daddy, you know, we won this one uh, for some friends of mine back home, too. Uh, had a friend of mine lose a mother this past week. But uh, we want to dedicate this win to, to her and, and the rest of the, uh, the Neal family. But. Um, it was a good win, and the Chevrolet Monte Carlo ran good all day, and, and you know, we made the pit right calls on pit, pit road, and the car was just fast right off the bat. And he did one other thing, guys. He was patient. Boy, was he ever. He made up for a week ago big time. Our McDonald's Winter Circle interview as Dale Earnhardt Jr. climbs out with his fifth win of the 1998 season. Earnhardt Jr. takes the win. Elliot Sandler will finish in second spot. Buckshot Jones in third. LaJoy fourth. And David Green in fifth as the fireworks go off. Our unofficial results from the 17th running of the NASCAR Bush Grand National Series Kroger 200. Of course, remember, a lot of racing action to come your way tomorrow. Our live coverage at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ABC Sports of the fifth running of the NASCAR Winston Cup Brickyard.